a star no larger than a city, yet heavier than our sun. A single teaspoon of it would weigh a billion tons, enough to crush skyscrapers into dust. It spins over 700 times per second, faster than a jet engine, firing beams of radiation like a cosmic lighthouse. Its magnetic field is a quadrillion times stronger than Earth's, strong enough to tear atoms apart. And beneath its surface, a crust cracking under unimaginable pressure, releasing bursts of gamma radiation that could sterilize entire planets. It looks calm, distant, like a star frozen in time. But one touch and your body would be unmade at the atomic level. This is a neutron star, one of the most extreme objects in the known universe. And today we ask the impossible question, what would happen if you touched one? A star many times larger than our sun, reaching the end of its life. When its fuel runs out, it collapses under its gravity in a violent supernova explosion. What's left behind is one of the strangest objects in the universe, a neutron star. These cosmic corpses are only about 20 kilometers wide, roughly the size of San Francisco, but they pack in 1.4 to 2.4 times the mass of our sun. That's like squeezing a mountain into a marble. Under this pressure, atoms are crushed. Electrons and protons merge into neutrons, forming an ultra-dense soup, possibly even stranger quark matter deep inside. The result? A star with a crust just about a kilometer thick, made of iron so dense and rigid it's tougher than diamond. To grasp the scale, a single teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh a billion tons on Earth, equivalent to Mount Everest. In a spoon, even the light around these stars behaves differently. Their gravity is so intense that it bends space itself, allowing us to see more than half of the star's surface at once. It's as if space is warped around them, distorting everything nearby. Neutron stars are nature's densest laboratories, tiny but mighty reminders of just how extreme the universe can be. Drifting toward the surface of a neutron star, an object smaller than a city, yet heavier than our sun. As you approach, gravity increases to unimaginable levels. Your body would begin to stretch, spaghettified, long before you even reach the crust. The tidal forces are so intense, they don't just pull at your limbs. They pull atoms from atoms. Now imagine you do touch it. In that instant, you'd be vaporized. The speed at which you fall, nearly the speed of light, means the impact would unleash energy equivalent to 1,000 hydrogen bombs. Not just deadly, erasing. And what if you brought even a tiny piece, say a sugar cube, back to Earth? That fragment would weigh a billion tons and instantly punch through the ground, tunneling to the Earth's core like a drill through butter. The radiation, gamma rays, X-rays, and a blizzard of charged particles. Lethal in all directions. Then there's the magnetic field. A neutron star's can be a quadrillion times stronger than Earth's. It doesn't just scramble your electronics. It tears apart molecules. Your very structure would dissolve. This isn't just dangerous. It's cosmic violence on a level no human could survive. Let's say you wanted to touch a neutron star. You can't. Not even with a probe. Anything we send would melt, vaporize, or be crushed long before it got close. Now, imagine trying to bring a piece of it back to Earth. A fragment the size of a sugar cube would weigh a billion tons. If it suddenly appeared on our planet, it would punch straight through the crust and tunnel down to the core, like a bullet through tissue paper. The Earth's surface would quake. The crust would collapse. The atmosphere, instantly blown away by the sheer energy release. And yet, neutron stars aren't just dangerous, they're precise. Some of them, called pulsars, spin hundreds of times a second, emitting beams of radiation like cosmic lighthouses. These beams sweep across space with such regularity that we use them as galactic timekeepers. Some are even more precise than atomic clocks. And here's something surreal. Astronomers have recorded the pulses of real pulsars and turned them into sound. What does the death cry of a star sound like? Surprisingly, like the rhythmic hum of helicopter blades or the whir of an engine idling in deep space. This is the edge of what we can imagine, and it's very real. The sun, as it stands today, is not massive enough to become a neutron star. When it dies, it will shed its layers and quietly become a white dwarf. But let's imagine a different fate. 
What if our sun collapsed into a neutron star? In a blink, it would shrink from a sphere 870,000 miles wide to just 12 miles across, about the size of a small city. The entire mass of our star compressed into something no bigger than London. There would be no more sunlight. Day would vanish. Earth would freeze almost instantly. Crops would die, oceans would ice over, and life would be extinguished in weeks, if not sooner. But the loss of heat isn't the only issue. The sun's gravitational profile would change drastically. Orbits of the planets would destabilize. Mercury and Venus might be pulled in or thrown out. Earth's path could spiral wildly or send us crashing inward. And then comes the magnetism. Neutron stars often carry magnetic fields a trillion times stronger than Earth's. That field alone could tear our planet's molecules apart. Radiation levels would surge beyond anything survivable. This isn't just a cold end. It's violent, disorienting, and complete. The solar system wouldn't fade. It would unravel. Deep in the constellation sexton spins a monster, PSR J0952-0607, the heaviest and fastest spinning neutron star ever discovered. It crams 2.4 times the mass of our sun into a sphere just 20 kilometers wide. And it spins at a blistering 707 times per second, faster than an aircraft turbine, faster than a blender blade. Scientists call it the Black Widow Pulsar because it's slowly devouring its partner, a nearby white dwarf star. The pulsar's intense gravity and radiation siphon matter from its companion, feeding its own mass and momentum. But this feast comes at a price. With each bite, it grows closer to the critical collapse threshold. A little more mass, and gravity will win. The pulsar will implode into a black hole. It's a ticking time bomb in space, a star dancing on the razor's edge of existence. Among neutron stars, magnetars are the rarest and the most terrifying. Only about 1 in 10 neutron stars become magnetars, but those that do possess magnetic fields a quadrillion times stronger than Earth's. This field is so intense, it can literally tear atoms apart. Sometimes, their iron crusts can't take the pressure. They crack violently in events called starquakes, releasing enormous bursts of gamma rays. So powerful, they've been detected from across the galaxy. If a magnetar were as close as 10 light years from Earth, its radiation could strip away our entire atmosphere in seconds, turning our planet into a lifeless husk. We've recorded these monsters erupting. One flare released more energy in a fraction of a second than the sun emits in 100,000 years. They are ticking time bombs, quiet, invisible, and unimaginably dangerous. When a massive star dies, one of two things can be born, a neutron star or a black hole. Both are forged in the heart of a supernova, but what determines which one forms? It all comes down to mass. If the core remnant is below about 2.4 times the mass of our sun, it becomes a neutron star, an object that resists total collapse. It's like pressing pause on gravity's unstoppable force. The result? A city-sized sphere of pure nuclear matter with a solid crust and unimaginable density. But if the mass goes just beyond that limit, Past what's called the Tolman Oppenheimer Volkoff limit, there's no stopping gravity. The core keeps collapsing infinitely. No surface, no structure, just a singularity surrounded by an event horizon, a point of no return. That's a black hole. So, in a way, a neutron star is a black hole that almost happened. Neutron stars can be studied because they reflect light and emit radiation. Black holes, by contrast, don't even let light escape. Side by side, they represent two extreme fates of matter. One, a stellar corpse frozen in time. The other, a gravitational abyss, which one forms depends on just a few extrasolar masses. But the consequences couldn't be more different. Not all pulsars are alone in the void. Around 0.5% of them have planetary systems, but they're nothing like ours. Their planets orbit erratically, whipped by distorted gravity and soaked in deadly radiation. One such system, PSR B1257 plus 12, hosts three rocky exoplanets, some of the first ever discovered outside our solar system. But don't expect peaceful skies there. These worlds live under constant pulses of radiation and violent stellar winds. If life exists, it would be life forged in chaos, hardened, hidden, and utterly alien. 
Neutron stars are among the most deceptive objects in the cosmos. To the eye, they're small and still silent pinpricks in the sky. But don't be fooled. Inside, they pack more mass than the sun into a space the size of a city. One teaspoon would outweigh a mountain. Their gravity can shred atoms. Their magnetic fields can erase molecules. And their surfaces are so dense and hot, they remain solid even at a million degrees. They don't just warp space, they bend our understanding of physics. And yet, these cosmic beasts give us more than nightmares. Their spinning beams serve as precise galactic clocks, tools for navigation. When they collide, they don't just explode. They forge elements like gold and platinum, gifts from stellar death scattered across the universe. They are both the wreckage and the creators of worlds. In every way, neutron stars show us nature's extremes, how far matter can be pushed before it breaks or becomes something new. And they remind us of something haunting and beautiful. The universe doesn't need monsters. It creates them.